Before we get into the video, I want to make a massive disclaimer before we get to the video. This is spoilers for the amazing movie Spider-Man No Way Home. If you haven't seen it, click off this video now. After you go watch it, come back and watch this review. This will be full of spoilers. This will be a review over the entire movie, the entire storyline of the movie. So if you haven't seen it, again, click off now. This is your one chance. Also, another thing, none of the scenes that I'm showing in the background of this video are from directly from the movie. They're from the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, also, some other images for people that show up throughout the film. So you don't have to worry about seeing scenes that were leaked and just crappy quality. I did my best to get good quality photos in the background like I normally do for my videos. If you enjoyed the video, hit the button down below. If you're new, enjoy the rest of the video again. That was the spoiler disclaimer for the video. <laughs> Enjoy this video. So, this movie was just amazing all around. It started off right where Spider-Man Far From Home ended, which is Peter's identity being blown to the entire world, Mysterio framing Peter for killing him, um, where it ended up in London, and then obviously, you know, where this, all this took place. And then Peter going back to New York, and we saw J. Joe and Jason from uh, the Raimi uh, trilogy, which is amazing to see him. He he was appeared several times throughout this film. Um, I'm glad he was in it, um, doing what he does. It's you know working at Daily Beagle. Um, obviously, like I said, Peter's identity was blown, and we had um, MJ and Peter trying to escape from it all. Um, they end up going back to um, Aunt May's house um, where they end up protesting and people were protesting outside their house. They were following them everywhere. Um, Happy and Aunt May apparently broke up or something. Um, so they were going through all that. And then um, Peter's trying to fix it. And it, it was it was like the whole city just went the full light. Chaos mode on Peter. Like, that's what this felt like. And when connected to Peter, and when you know he was Spider Man, like, they're all going after him. Um, and then the cops came after Peter and the rest of them, the rest of MJ and uh, Ned and um, May and I think Cappy, I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, I don't remember Happy entirely. They might have. I don't remember if they arrested Happy or not. Again, it's, it's a very high possibility, but I know they arrested MJ, Aunt May, and Ned and Peter. Um, basically, you know, it's affecting everyone's lives around Peter, and Peter's worried about that more than anything else. And we find that out more later in the movie, like a couple minutes later, that they're trying to get into college, and they can't because of what supposedly Peter did. Um, in the new safe house that they went into, at least Peter and Aunt, or, um, Aunt May moved in the happiest place, which is like Fort Knox. I mean, you can't, you know... It's top of the line security, you would think, <laughs> um, at least technology wise, it is. Um, and it, I would assume Tony Stark went there a couple of times. I don't see Happy using all the tech that was there. <laughs> um, so I would assume Tony went there just to get away for maybe a day or two every now and then. Um, but we did end up seeing more of Peter being like Tony Stark than Spider Man throughout these scenes, which is amazing to see. Then we got the bridge scene um, with um, that drag post coming back. Peter was trying to convince the person who runs the college to let him, MJ, and Ned back into the college because it wasn't their fault. They were just helping Peter. Um, and we saw Peter show up in the Iron Spider suit and, you know, still saving people as much as he can. And... It was amazing to see Dr. Octopus. I, I think seeing Otto back... I didn't, I didn't grow up watching the Raimi films. I, I wasn't even born when the first one was out. But I, I'm i pretty sure... No, I don't think I would have been. I know I was born when the third one came out. Like I was like eight or something when the third one came out. But... Um, I did grow up watching... Um, Garfield's uh, series, Amazing Spider-Man 1. I watched that. I remember watching it. Um, and I fell in love with that. That's what basically got me in the Spider-Man, pretty much, was Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. But, um, 
seeing, and I did end up watching the other three Spider-Man movies, the Raimi films. I did watch them all. <laughs> um, actually watched them all lately. Um, so seeing Otto back, I know I'm not a f much of a longer fan as a bunch of you are, but seeing Otto back was just amazing to see. Even though I am a fan of the film, I know there's a lot of you who are much bigger fans of the Raimi films than I am, but I think we can all agree it was amazing to see Otto back, especially the actor come back and him looking so good um, in the suit, even though he has aged, and even he said himself, he has wrinkles and they managed to edit all that out. So seeing him look like he did um, was just amazing to see throughout the episode. Or the episode, <laughs> um, the movie, not the episode. Um... God, can you imagine just, like, a full TV show if it was, like, ep like 20 episodes? I wouldn't mind that, honestly, but I'm glad it was a movie, not a TV series. But, um, then we saw Otto take, like, a chunk of Peter's suit, the Iron Spider suit, and it just materialized onto his arms, which is just amazing to see, and I love that they did that. Um... Which the CGI, the CGI is always amazing in these films, but I think the Spider-Man No Way Home film really shined on the CGI. It was just amazing, all the acting was top of the line, the lines were top of the line. I mean, this is like the Spider-Man film I at least have been wanting for like a decade or so now. And I know a lot of you that's been longer than that, but this film really gave me everything I've wanted to see and a whole lot more. So... Then the Green Goblin showed up, and then Doctor Strange teleported Doc Ock and Peter to his, like, lair or something in the basement, and put Doc Ock in a cell, and then gave Peter a little suit upgrade, um, to basically capture these villains, um, which he ended up capturing Electro and Sandman in, and he ended up catching a tree, too, because he missed Electro, so he ended up catching a tree, um, which was funny to see, but... Um, they also caught Lizard from the Amazing Spider-Man movie and Electro from Amazing Spider-Man 2. Obviously, Sam is from Spider-Man 3. Um, Norman is from Spider-Man 1. And then Doc Ock is from Spider-Man 2, the Raimi films. It was amazing to see these five villains come back from the other five movies. I'm so glad they did that. Um, but, yeah. I, I do like that Sam is still trying to be a good person, like he was in Spider-Man 2. Because... You know, obviously, or Spider-Man 3? Yeah, Spider-Man 3. <laughs> Duh. Um, <laughs> Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 3 was Sandman, you know, being the big bad of that movie, and then him trying to help at towards the end. We kind of got a, a, lot, a little bit of that throughout him showing up early in the movie. I'm glad we got that. Um, what we believed was Norman, obviously wasn't. We found that out later. He was just playing everyone. But they actually, Peter managed to fix Otto, um, and make him good, you know, a good person. Um, and there was another good scene with Otto and Peter where Otto actually gave Peter back to nanotech. And it formed that, like, iron spider, like, the actual iron spider on Peter's, like, suit that we've seen, like, from far, far from home that he made. And it's materialized onto it, and it made that gold spider on the suit. Which I thought was amazing. I love seeing that. I thought that's what they were hinting at in the trailer. Like when Otto materialized the arm. And then like Peter had the gold spider on. I was like did he do that? <laughs> like I was questioning that. I'm so glad they did that. Because it just made it. For me it made it a hundred times better of a scene. Um, and then we had Peter using his spider sense. It was a really good scene. With him trying to figure out who was betraying him or not. Um, this is the first one I think we've ever actually seen everyone get cured, or at least try to get cured. I don't think in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, like, Electro wasn't cured then, or trying to get cured, and then we had, um, I know Lizard got cured, I'm pretty sure, um, but obviously this is before that, but, you know, Otto, he got cured, but it was too late, and, you know, all that. So it's good to see all these Peter trying to get all these villains cured, even though after they did, you know, it's good to see that. Um, but then all hell breaks loose. Goblin attacks Peter. Um, Electro leaves, taking the arc reactor, which powered him up even more. Lizard broke out. Sandman left. Um, I don't remember what happened to Otto. I think, 
uh, I'm pretty sure Electro shot him out of the building, um, out of the window, and he just fell. He didn't die, but, you know, he caught himself, but he, he did get knocked out of the building. Um, and then we had a massive fight between Green Goblin and Peter, and... Um, I ended up on the first floor of the building where they were at, and uh, Green Goblin, Peter was still fighting, Aunt May showed up, and ended up getting struck by the glider. I don't think she died from that exactly, but a pumpkin bomb the Goblin threw, Peter tried to catch it, he got really heavily damaged, and then Aunt May seemed to have gotten really hurt from that too when she ended up dying. Um, Happy was there, he got arrested, seeing Aunt May dead, um, and then Peter went away, and they actually introduced, um, Andrew Garfield's Peter and Tobey Maguire's Peter in the following scene with Ned bringing them in, which I love that they brought, I love that they had Ned bringing these two iconic characters in, it was just amazing to see that, um, and there was a little, like, irony fight scene between the two Peters, to realize, like, hey, we're both Spider-Man here, you know, this isn't, like, someone's playing a trick on them. Um, and they both kind of came to the realization they're both Spider-Man. Then they heard about, um, our Peter's, Tom's Peter, um, Peter 1. <laughs> we know Tom's Peter 1, Toby's Peter 2, and Andrew's Peter 3, so I'll keep that in mind. Um, Peter 1's Aunt May died, and Peter 2 and Peter 3 heard about it. So they wanted to go talk to him. Um, and in a really good line with Aunt May telling Peter with great responsibility or um, with great power comes great responsibility. And, you know, Peter start Peter 1 starts saying it and then Peter 2 kind of caught on to it. And then Peter 3, you know, finished it off with how it happened or how they knew it. Um, which was a very, very good scene between those three. And I'm so glad they put it in there. Um... Then, uh, Peter was going to send them all home, but, you know, the other two Peters decided to change his mind, so they would help him fight these guys, um, and then it pretty much just, like, they're trying to trap everyone to cure them, um, and they were making the cures for Lizard and Electro and, um, I don't think they made one for Otto, because they already did, but... Um, Norman and Sandman. Did I say Sandman already? I don't think I did. But the other villains that showed up. They're trying to make cures for them. It was a cool scene with Andrew Garfield saying he's already cured Lizard before. So it's not going to be that hard. Um, obviously Tom already made... Tom's Peter already made the cure for um, Electro. Um, I'm pretty sure they said Toby's Peter was working on a cure for Norman. That or Sandman. I don't entirely remember which one, or both, maybe it was both. Um, and there was a funny scene between um, Ned calling for Peter and all of them just replied back, yeah, because <laughs> they're all Peter. Um, there's a lot of humor in this film, I'm glad there was. There should be for Spider-Man, I mean, he's a, he's a funny character, but he's also an iconic character, so to have all these three people back, and with them making so many corny jokes... Seeing that in the film throughout all three of these characters is amazing to see, nonetheless. Um, but anyways, they go to the Statue of Liberty, which is like under construction or something, it looks like. And um, by some attack from that happened in the Avengers film, honestly, or something in between this film and like Avengers Endgame or something probably happened there and it just destroyed it. But... Um, Peter was asking for everyone to believe in him again, you know, which obviously the city really doesn't, no one does anymore, because of what happened, they still believe he's a murderer, and he's bringing everyone here, which he did say he did bring everyone there, like, he wasn't hiding that fact, because he did, but he was asking for everyone to forgive him and to move past that, and they realized that the truth is he didn't kill Mysterio, and that, you know, Mysterio killed himself. Um, but... There was a really good scene between Toby's Peter and Andrew's Peter talking about, you know, before everyone showed up about um, Electro and how he became the bee. And then Toby's Peter is like, my back is hurting. Which if you didn't watch Spider-Man 2 or 3, you wouldn't know what that means. But, or why that's so funny, but, um, or iconic at least. Um, 
but Andrew ended up helping Toby's Peter fix that, which is great to see. It was a funny scene. Um, and they start talking about the web fluid, about how Toby just does that, and Andrew and Toby, or Tom's, has to just make it in their lab, you know, what a pain in the butt that has to be for them. Um, so that was a very funny scene between those three Peters. Um, and then Electro shows up, and uh, I think they started to fight him, or they started to go um, try to cure him, and then uh, Lizard showed up, Sandman showed up, and those two were just not working well together, which why would they? I get Tom's Peter, but you can't have a team with just one person working there to not. That's not how it works. Um, so they end up having a very, again, good scene between those three Peters, um, working, talking about teamwork and Peter being the Avengers, Peter 1 and Peter 2 and Peter 3, not knowing anything about the Avengers. I mean, they thought it was a band, at least Peter 3 did. Um, it was a really good swinging scene with all three Peters um, swinging up to the top of the place they were at to meet the other villains to fight them. Um, and they all agreed they are going to take down Sandman first, and so they were distracting everyone. They took Sandman out. Um, after Toby's Peter, Peter 2, um, took Sandman into the Statue of Liberty and, you know, basically tracked him in there to get him out. Um, Tom's Peter got rid of the lizard. Um, I think it would have been better if it was Andrew Garfield, but I didn't entirely mind it because it made up for it in a couple minutes, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes. Um, and then it goes to Electro and Otto shows up and... Helps the other three Peters who are trying to cure him. And actually cures Electro. Um, and then there's a little scene talking about... Um, with Between uh, Peter 3, Andrew Garfield's Peter, and Electro. Um, who's got no powers anymore. Like, is completely drained. Um, talking about how he thought Peter... How the Spider-Man was black. And Andrew's like, well, there probably is a black Spider-Man there. Which we know there is. We know Miles Morales... Um, is Spider-Man in some universe. I wouldn't be surprised if we get him one day. I would like that. I really would. I always liked Miles Morales' Spider-Man. It kind of gives you like a rookie... It gives you obviously a rookie Spider-Man feeling. But it also gives like a little bit of Peter Parker rolling in there. But also like Miles Morales being himself. Which I think is good for that character. Um, And then... Uh... Strange guy Green Goblin showed up and Strange got the box back to reset reality, send everyone back home. And there was a pumpkin bomb in there, it blew up, the whole place just came down on everyone. MJ fell off. Uh Peter One went after her, got caught by the goblin, so he couldn't catch her. And then Peter three, Andrew Garfield, jumped off the building to go get MJ and actually saved her. Um which, for me, was a very emotional scene because I always cried during Gwen's death scene in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Peter didn't save her. Um, and seeing that kind of made me cry a little bit. It, it was a really good scene. I'm so glad they did that. They gave Andrew Garfield's Peter redemption for what he... What they what he very well could have saved Gwen in Amazing Spider-Man 2. And they made up for not making him save Gwen in this movie by saving MJ. I'm so glad they did that. Um... So then it came up to, um, pretty sure it was Peter destroying the Goblin's glider and they came crashing down on the very bottom of the platform. And our Peter's about to kill him. And we saw Toby's and Andrew's Peter, um, come up to, or watch Peter being the crap out of Norman. Um, and he and our Peter one ended up grabbing Goblin's glider, about to kill him. Toby came in, put the glider down, he actually got stabbed, which is, I, this scene got spoiled for me, which pissed me off, because people don't know how to keep things to themselves, um, but if you're on YouTube over the past week, it got spoiled for you, <laughs> um, but when I first watched it, I was like, oh my god, they're gonna kill him, um, but it, it was a very good scene, he obviously didn't end up dying, because he went home, um, but Garfield threw the cure to Peter One, and they cured Norman. Um, and then those three had a big hug, which is amazing to see. 
And then the more emotional part was that to keep the multiverse in line, to make sure that no one else can come here, Strange tried to cast a spell that everyone would forget everything about our Peter, um, about Pounce Peter. Not necessarily Spider-Man, but that, let alone Peter Parker Spider-Man, but also Peter Parker himself. No one will remember Peter Parker, not even MJ or Ned or, you know, whatever. None of them would remember Peter. He'd be like, he didn't even exist. Not, none of the Avengers. No one. Um, so then the cast was spell, and there was a very good scene between Peter, Ned, and MJ saying their last goodbye before they forget each other, or at least MJ and Ned forget Peter. Peter will remember him. He's not going to lose his memory over it, but they'll forget him. And then, uh, again, very emotional scene between Peter, Ned, and MJ after the spell cast, where Peter goes to see him, and they don't remember him at all, but, um... You know, he didn't really do anything then. If there is another Spider-Man film, which it seems like there will be with Tom Holland in it, I would assume they're going to close that out and say that Peter told him or something like that. I would assume so. I can't imagine them not doing that. Um, And then we got the amazing swing scene at the end with Peter in that iconic red and blue suit now. Not red and black or, you know, whatever. Like, it's... It's a suit that looks like Andrew Garfield's and Tobey Maguire's suit more than the one, but with his own like little twist on with the spider and all that. It looks amazing. <laughs> um, I hope we get more of it because this is the ending of the Homecoming trilogy. Um, we have Homecoming, Far From Home, and now No Way Home. This is the end of that Home trilogy. Like that's what the Homecoming, whatever you want to call it. Like this is the end of that. This and in the trailer, it's for No Way Home. This is Peter's beginning. This is Peter's beginning for his journey as Spider-Man. So there's obviously going to be another film. And I think Sony even said that um, Tom Holland, while he's on for one film combining both the MCU and Sony, there's going to be a solo Spider-Man film produced by Sony um, with the same directors and all that. Give or take probably like five years down the road. Sony didn't say that, but Tom Holland was saying he wants to take like a couple years off. Probably three to five years. I think he deserves it. And I think we can all agree on that for this film especially. Um, but this film was everything I've wanted a Spider-Man film to be like. And I'm so glad they pulled it off. Um, they did an amazing job with it. And seeing Andrew and Toby come back was amazing. Seeing all the iconic villains come back was amazing. Um, and just, it was a 10 out of 10 movie. Every, I didn't have a problem with any of the scenes in this movie. Um, Far From Home, I had some problems with scenes, because it was just like, why is this in there? And a little bit with Homecoming too, but No Way Home was like the best Spider-Man film I think there's ever been, and that there ever will be. Um, unless there's like a new Spider-Man coming in, and they manage like 10 years down the line, bring back Andrews, Tobys, and Tom's Peter at the point in time, there is a new Peter Parker, which I would be... I would be genuinely surprised if there would be a new Peter Parker now. But if there is, you know, if they ever do bring Tom back and Andrew and Toby back in one film along with the new Peter Parker, that would be amazing to see. Or Miles Morales. If they do bring in Miles Morales and they bring in the multiverse again to say he's on another Earth or something, and they bring all these people back, it'd be amazing to see them all on one screen again, obviously. Um, But this film was just amazing to see. And... It, yeah, I think we can all agree it's the best Spider-Man film hands down. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts about the movie in the comments down below. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. Hit the like button. Share it as well. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Hope to see you guys then. Bye, guys.